Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, to a very special Advanced Higher Chemistry session. This is, if everything goes to plan, our last lesson before the summer holidays. Um, and in it, I would like to consider these guys. Uh, this is included in the Advanced Higher course because it's one little extra piece of evidence for electron arrangements, just as if you needed any more. And the SQ won't use to know about it. Could I start with a very quick uh, recap, please, on the definition of ionisation energy from last year? Excuse me two seconds. All right, that's better. I've just fired up my stopwatch so I don't ramble too much for this one. Ionisation energy from national, from national five, hello, from higher, was defined as the amount of energy required to pull one electron off every atom in a mole of gaseous atoms. That's the first ionization energy. The second ionization energy goes from 1 plus to 2 plus. The third goes from 2 plus to 3 plus. You remember the patterns. Also last year, we told you that generally speaking, as you go along a period, then the ionization energy increases. There's a period there. Now, as you can see, that was not much like a lot of the stuff. Not a total lie, but also <laughs> what's going on here? There seems to be two dips. Interestingly. Now, uh, this is where we come across a slight conflict because the SQA want you to know about these two dips and they want you to know about the reasons behind them, which is all fine and dandy for this one. This one's going to pose a wee bit of a problem, so I'm going to give you two explanations when we get to it. Let's look at this first dip here. What is going on with boron? Why don't we have a look at the electron configuration of beryllium and boron and we'll see what's caused the dip in red here. So beryllium is... 1s2, 2s2, um, that's it, and boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Now, you would expect, because boron's got one more proton than beryllium, for this to be slightly higher than beryllium, but instead it's noticeably lower. Now, this would imply that this electron here, this guy, is easier to remove than you might expect. And there are, <coughs> excuse me, there are two reasons for this. Reason A, you have now moved from the 2s uh, shell up to the 2p shell, which are physically a higher energy level, which means they're slightly further away. So 2p electrons are further away from the nucleus, which of course makes them easier to pluck off. I'm tempted to make a joke there, but I will not. Um, 2p electrons are further away from the nucleus. And the second reason is that these two s electrons that you're trying to remove are shielded from the nucleus by only a single 1s orbital. If you look at the situation now, you're trying to remove this guy here, and he is shielded by not just the 1s, but also the 2s. So there are greater, there's another layer of shielding. So there's an extra layer. See, we didn't know about this. We just counted these as being one bundle together last year. Now we know the truth. That actually makes more sense. Extra layer of shielding. Okay, and that's the explanation for the red circle. That's unequivocal. Nobody's got any complaints about that. Here's the one that's a bit more contentious. So let's shift over to blue and we'll have a look at oxygen and we'll try and figure out why it's lower than nitrogen. <laughs> uh, okay, so is that still in frame? Oh, terrible cameraman. Yes, it is. Good, good. I did everything. Uh, portrait and still landscape here for some reason. So let's move on to the blue circle. Uh, if we have a look at the electronic configuration of nitrogen. Nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p123. If we look at the configuration of oxygen, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Mm, okay, uh, there's none of these that's going to apply to this because we're not skipping up to another layer. There's no extra shielding or anything, so well, why is oxygen lower? Now, <laughs> in green, I'll do the SQA version. What the SQA say is that the half-filled orbital of nitrogen, the 2p3, has a special stability associated with it. So the SQA says that 2p3 is unexpectedly stable. So 
more stable. So they're actually saying that nitrogen is actually too high, not that oxygen is too low. More stable because it's a half filled. Now, I've done a bit of reading on this. It's been a long time since I did this. And uh, I've come across ChemGuide. I like ChemGuide. If you want to go and look up his or her, I'm not entirely sure who does it. Uh, sheets, they're really detailed. And ChemGuide says a very different thing. Because what they say is that if you draw out the p orbitals, you of course have this for nitrogen. And you have this for oxygen. And ChemGuide says there's a repulsion between these two electrons occupying the same orbital. So therefore, oxygen actually wants you effectively to remove that. So ChemGuide says oxygen is lower. SQA says nitrogen is higher. Um, so I'm going to say the... Not the overlapping. What's the right word? The doubling up of electrons in this orbital. So the twin... Occupation. Is this on camera? Just, oh dear. Quit twin occupation of the p orbital causes repulsion. And that's why it's easy. The repulsion between the electrons, that is. And that's why it's easier to pull off the first electron from oxygen. Um, we're nearly done. We're very nearly done there, um, because there's one last thing that I would like to do, and I could have done with printing this out, excuse me. And we're back. This is an illustration from ChemGuide's uh, website, in fact, and it's the very last point I want to make about ionisation energy. It's quite a nice point they make. They say that you get exactly the same. Now, in, in red, we've got the second period, so that's lithium across the neon. And in the third period, in green, we've got um, sodium across to um, argon. <laughs> I need my holidays. I've forgotten my periodic table. Now, um, if we zoom in just a wee fraction here, there we go. Um, if we zoom in a fraction here, you can see the point that they make is that you get the same dips. There's the dip from beryllium to boron, and the same dip from nitrogen to oxygen that we talked about. And you get precisely the same dip in the next period along, from magnesium to aluminium, and also from uh, phosphorus to sulphur. Uh, the last point I want to make is the fact that if you look at period 3, they are all lower than period 2. That backs up something we said at higher, of course. We said as you go down the periodic table, the ionisation energy decreases. Uh, and the reason for that uh, was there were two reasons that it decreased as you go down. Uh, the outer electrons were now, instead of dealing with um, 2p, uh, we're dealing with, not for neon, sorry, don't... Uh, Oh, yeah, it's for neon, that's fine. So instead of dealing with 2p, we're dealing with um, 3p, of course, which are further away, and there's an extra layer of there's an extra layer of shielding involved as well. So that's why the greens are uniformly lower than the reds, for these two reasons. Further away, um, further away electrons and more shielding by the layers inside. Sure, there was one more point I was going to make. Oh, I remember, of course, though, just in case you ever get lost in these, you notice that within any given period, the group 8, of course, is always the most difficult because they contain the most protons for any partic particular period. Um, and also, if you remember, the, the pulls the whole electrons in slightly. So that's why your group 8 elements, neon or argon, will always be the highest ionization energy of any particular element in one period. And that is a wrap. Thank you so much for listening to my ramblings. I, I'm not sure what we're going to do in August. We'll have to wait and see. Have a good summer.